Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I am playing around with a couple of different products today. If you've been here before, you know I've been looking at other products for me to use in place of Lightroom. I am going to leave Lightroom behind. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go, and one of the major contenders for me is DxO Photo Lab 4. Absolutely love this product. It's so fun. It's so powerful. Um, but I've had a couple of people ask me, and this is also something I've been kind of working on as well, and that is what is my workflow? Because I'm still going to edit my photos in Luminar. There's so much power uh, and so much kind of fun stuff I can do with the photo in Luminar AI that I don't want to give that up. And so I'm looking for a Lightroom replacement that will have a, a great file browser, uh, lots of other things like that. And DxO Photo Lab 4, I've done a number of videos. There's a little playlist about it. But it's a great product. I absolutely love it. But I want to use it in combination with Luminar AI. So People have asked me, what's my workflow? How's that going to work for me? Let me show you. That's what this video is about. I've got a photo here. It is a raw file. One of the nice things I like about uh, DxO is as you hover over it, you can see the EXIF data and that sort of thing shows up. You can see it's a raw file. I'm going to double click. And that takes me over to the customized module. I could have also hit in the customized uh, button there in the upper uh, left. I'm going to drop that down out of the way. And what I've got over here is the uh, advanced workspace. If you go up here, to workspaces, there's a standard and advanced. I tend to stay in the advanced workspace. It's basically got all the tools in it. But anyway, I want to develop my raw file here and do a few things and, of course, manage my assets or you know have my file browser capability here in PhotoLab 4. But then I want to go do my fun creative stuff in Luminar, and they work great together. So I'm going to start here, and the first thing I'm going to do is get smart lighting. Let me turn that on. And it does a great job. I don't do like a really high amount like that, but you know, I think it defaults to about 15. I might do something, you know, a little bit higher than that. Then I come into selective tone, which is great for the highlights and, and midtones and things like that. So I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit, bump up the shadows just a little bit, and then I love their clear view. I can't even say it. Clear view plus. Let me turn that on. You can see what it does. It's too intense. It defaults to 50, but you know. At a much more subdued rate, like at 20 or so, it has a nice little pop in the photo. So there it is before, and there it is after. It's a little bit like a dehaze combined with a clarity, kind of. I don't really know, but I like it quite a bit. And that's my photo so far. So if I show you my starting point, there it is before I did anything, and that's my current state. Now, this was a beautiful sunset, and one of the things I want to do is really pop the colors. And if you've seen my videos before around Luminar, you know one of the things I like to do is really smooth out skies and waters. I just like that. It's personal preference. And I can do those two things, color pop and smoothing out skies or water, really quickly and easily in Luminar, which is why I want to use it in combination with DxO Photo Lab 4 here for this photo. So while there's a lot of other tools here, I can do great color work here as well. And I don't have to go to Luminar AI for everything that I like to do all the time. But there are some things that work really well in Luminar that I think it's the best at. And I think ColourPop is one of those. So I'm going to go ahead now and pop over to Luminar AI to wrap up this. And then I'm going to come back here and show, show you how I tie this all together. So to go from DxO Photo Lab 4 over to Luminar, you click on Image and click on Export. And then there's an option here, Export to Application. I'm going to click on that. My window comes up. Now, I've already chosen Luminar AI, but I can click Browse. I can go to this list of apps, and I've got quite a few of them, but you can select the app that way. I'm using Luminar AI. I'm going to export as a 16-bit TIFF, 300 DPI, no resizing, none of this other stuff. And I'm going to click Export, send this photo over to Luminar AI, and have some more fun editing there. Okay, here we go. It lands in Luminar AI in the templates page. Now, if you click on catalog, it will show up in single image edits, but it'll default to the template page. However, I'm gonna skip templates, although I use them a lot. I'm gonna go straight on to editing and kind of have a little bit of fun here. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of Accent AI because it does give the photo a nice little bit of pop. I am gonna do the negative structure that I talked about to kind of smooth out the skies and water. Again, personal preference. I just think they're kind of dreamy that way. I'm going to go into a paint mask, and I'm going to do erase, and I'm going to erase that negative structure from uh, some of the, uh, the man-made structure as well as like the grass over here and that sort of thing. So let me just take care of that, and then I'll pop into the next part of this edit. Okay, there you go. I've done all my erasing. So now this negative structure is applying just to the skies and the water. 
I think that looks nice. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this mask. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna copy that because I'm gonna use that again here in a minute. And that's for the next filter, which is details. I wanna bring up a little bit of detail in these, uh, like in the bridge and the buildings and things like that. So I'm gonna pop a little bit of medium detail and a little bit of small detail. I don't wanna overdo it. And maybe a little bit of sharpening as well, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go open the masking menu and I'm gonna paste this mask, but I don't want it to be the same as before. I wanna be the opposite, so I'm gonna hit invert. So if I come over here and hit forward slash, you can see my mask, my mask is applying there which is basically the opposite of what I did in the structure tool because I copied it, pasted it here, and then inverted it. So I've got that all set. I'm now gonna to go to the landscape tool and get golden hour, which is just one of the unique and just powerfully awesome tools in Luminar. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that a bit to the right. I am trying to pop that sunset a bit. I'm liking that look quite a bit. I think it's looking sharp and fun. I am going to go into color. I'm going to get the HSL. Now there is HSL capability in DxO, but I'm going to go in here, go into saturation of the greens, pull that down a little bit. It's a little bit too neon green there along the banks, but I think the rest of the colors are looking pretty awesome. While I'm here, I'm going to take advantage of some more of the fun in Luminar, and that is to get mystical because, you know, mystical. Like, if you've used it, you just know how awesome it is. So I'm going to drag that a little bit to the right. I'm getting a nice, moody, kind of romantic lighting kind of look to this photo, which I love. And then I'm going to wrap this up in the uh, Pro Tab, with a little bit of color harmony. I'm going to go down here to co color balance and just play around a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit more color in some of these areas. I'm going to get a little bit more magenta in that sunset, and maybe a little bit more red as well. Something about like that, not a major shift, but there's the before color harmony and specifically color balance and then after. So I think that's looking pretty awesome. I mean, I'm a little bit biased. I took the photo, I like big color, all that stuff. So anyway, now that I'm here and I'm done, I'm gonna click export. So here's the thing. L uh, Luminar AI does not operate as a plugin. In other words, you can't hit you know save or accept changes or whatever it is and it drops back into PhotoLab 4 directly. But once I hit export, I'm going to hit save to disk. I'm going to change the name of this. And I'm going to say this is going to be copy-dxo-lai. There we go. I'm going to leave it uh, saved in the same demo files folder as before. I'm going to save it as pro photo space and a TIFF. And I'm going to say no compression. And I like all that. I'm going to hit save. Now it's gonna drop it back into that same folder where I started with the original photo. So now I'll go back to DxO, and this is the photo I started with. I need to go over to my library, and as soon as I do that, you will see I have the photo here. That's my edited photo. You can see as I hover over it, the name that I gave it, it is a TIFF file, and the reason why it's there automatically is because I saved it in the same demo files folder that I have on my desktop, and the beautiful thing about PhotoLab, it's a file browser. So it's just seeing any folder that is being pointed to. So anytime you drop new files in or remove files from that folder, it's reflected automatically here in that folder and visible here in PhotoLab 4. So while it's not exactly a plugin, it operates quite easily and quite simply. If you just save it from Luminar AI back in the folder that you started and that folder is being watched by DxO, then it's gonna pick it up immediately. So here it is. So I can double click and here's my finished photo. So I love that about it. Now, there's probably some other things I'd do. I'd probably get this repair tool and probably go take some of these little bits of trash and spots that are in the water and take those out. But the point was really the workflow. I started, did some raw development here in DxO, made the changes that I want to made, uh, make with Selective Tone and Smart Lighting and Clearview Plus. And then I shot the photo over to Luminar AI, did all my color work, some masking, some of the powerful, fun stuff that I can do really well and really easily, I might add, in Luminar AI, did it there, and then exported the photo, saved it back in the original folder that it started in. And because this comes back as a new file, it shows up next to the original right here in PhotoLab 4. Super easy, super clean. Again, not exactly a plug-in workflow, but I mean, it's this close. It's maybe a few seconds longer, and for me, it's not an issue. So this is one of the reasons that I'm considering PhotoLab 4 as my Lightroom replacement, because even though it's not a full plug-in workflow, it's very similar. It's nearly the same thing, in my opinion, and it gives me all the power of both tools, and they work really well together. 
I wanted to walk through that here. I hope it answers some questions. If you have more, don't hesitate to drop those in the comments down below. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves out there. Have fun editing, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys, and adios.